Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about oil and using oil to lubricate brushless motors. This is something that I started to look into about a year and a half ago because I was noticing that some of my motors ran smoother than others, even motors of the same type. And sometimes they would start out smooth and then over time the sound would get more raspy and performance would start to degrade. And so I started to wonder if my motors needed more lubrication, uh, if there was something that I could add myself, and if so, what kind of performance change I might see. Um, I asked people about it online and I couldn't get any good info at the time and so I started to do some experimentation of my own. That was a long time ago. A lot's happened since then. I've gotten a lot more experience. Now I've tried three different types of oil and I've actually lubricated most of the drones that you can see behind me just to see what would happen. And today I want to share some of those results with you. Um, to be sure, the results are going to vary. It depends on the type of motor and the condition of the motor. Um, but there are definitely cases where it can make a big difference, uh, nowhere more so than for those high KV whoop motors. I think this is a pretty big deal um, and it's something that I don't hear a lot of people talking about. And so I'm happy that I finally had time to make this video for you. Uh, so check out this quick example. All right, for our first example, this is a Mobula 6. It's completely stock with 25,000 kV motors. I've only flown it a few times, so these motors are in excellent condition. But even so, I wanna show you what happens if you add a little bit of oil. So listen carefully, you're gonna hear what it sounds like normally, and then after oiling. You hear that? After lubricating these motors, the sound got quieter, smoother, and a little bit higher pitch. And of course, sound is vibration in the air, and it originates with vibration on the drone, so that's a good indication of how much vibration we're getting on the drone. And of course, any energy that goes into vibration is going to hurt your efficiency, so I think the efficiency just went up. And another way we can tell that is from the pitch. Uh, the pitch that you hear comes from the RPMs of the motor, and so a higher pitch indicates that the motors are actually spinning faster for the same throttle value. Now, when I did those tests, I had it connected to Betaflight, so I can also show you the amount of noise that was actually picked up by the gyro. Watch this one more time, this time with the graphs overlaid. It's not always a night and day difference, but it is definitely a difference that I can feel. Uh, having smoother running motors and less noise going into the gyro and the PID loop, I think that just results in a smoother, more precise flight. In fact, this is actually the drone that I flew in elite class at Whooptopia, and it was flying fine, but uh, my friend Cody and I, we re-oiled our motors partway through the day of racing, and even then, going from one heat to the next, I could tell the difference. Here are a few more examples, so you can see this is definitely not a fluke. Applying the oil to the motors is really quick and easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you the different types of oil that I've tried, and I've got more of those A-B tests so you can see what it's like on different types of motors. Uh, but first, let's talk about those types of motors, the construction of the motor, and when I think you might see a big benefit and when you wouldn't. Brushless motors come in all different shapes and sizes, and there's different ways they can be constructed. On some of them, the oil is gonna make a big difference, and on other ones, it's probably just gonna be a waste of time. So let's take a look at the construction of these motors for just a minute, because that will help you to understand what the oil is doing and when I think it'll make a big difference and when it won't. Let's start by taking a look at a larger motor because it's just easier to see everything. This is a motor from one of my five inch racing drones. You can see the bell on top. The shaft goes through to a screw on the bottom. Sometimes you'll see a clip on other motors. If you take that out, you can see there's a little bushing underneath it. Then if you take the bell off, you can see all of the magnets. This one got kind of smashed up in a race and you can see the stator. This is a 2206.5 motor, and that refers to the size of this. That means 22 millimeters across and 6.5 millimeters top to bottom. When we're talking about friction inside of a motor, the thing we have to consider is this shaft and the hole that it goes into, because that should be the only part that's touching. And so if we have friction, that's where it's gonna come from. Now, if you look at the center of the motor, you can see this silver canister. You can see it on the top and on the bottom, and that canister has the ball bearings inside of it. So this center cylinder can actually spin independently of the other, and that means that the shaft is not actually rubbing on anything. Instead, this circle turns and the ball bearings roll around inside. When I tried lubricating motors with this kind of construction, my conclusion was that it really wasn't worth it. I wasn't seeing any significant benefit. And I think the reason for that is because the ball bearings are sealed inside of these canisters. They come lubricated already from the factory. That lubrication usually stays inside. And if you add lubrication on the outside, it's not likely to get inside where it needs to be. And so these usually don't need to be lubricated, but I could definitely imagine a case, uh, especially if it was well-worn uh, or if this casing was damaged in some way, 
way where adding oil might help. I don't know. If you have experience with that, let us know down in the comments below. Now, if we go all the way to the other end of the size spectrum, these are tiny little whoop motors. This is an 0603, meaning that the stator inside is 6 millimeters wide, 3 millimeters tall, and this is an 0802. 0802 is my favorite size for 65 millimeter 1S whoops, and I really enjoy these motors. But as you can see on the bottom, there are no ball bearings. You just have the bushing on the bottom there. It's the same thing here. It's a little harder to see because this one has a ring on the bottom that's soldered in place, but this one's easy enough to open up. So let me show you what it looks like. If you look closely, you can see there's just this bushing around the top. It doesn't go all the way through, it's just on the top, and then there's one right here as well. So this rubs against this, and the shaft rubs on the inside of this cylinder. So there you've got direct sliding friction, unlike the ball bearings. And motors with this kind of construction, I think, have the biggest benefit from oil because you've got that direct contact. Now, this is an interesting motor. This is a newer construction. It's from Beta FPV. Same size in KV, 0802, 22,000 KV. This is the motor for the Meteor 65. And if you look on the bottom, you can see it actually does have ball bearings. Those are tiny, tiny little ball bearings inside of there, but they're only on the bottom and not on the top. On the top, you can see that there's just a bushing. And as far as I've seen, that's true of all motors in this size, 0802 or 0803. All the motors I've seen on the market that claim to have ball bearings actually just have them on the bottom and not on the top. And that's too bad because then you still have the friction on the top and the possibility for this to wear out. If this wears out, then the shaft is going to kind of wobble around on the top and the ball bearings just aren't going to help. So having ball bearings sounds like a really great idea, but when they're this size and they're only on the bottom, I'm not actually sure it works out to a win. Uh, this motor is a lot noisier than my motors that just have bushings, um, and it's also very, very power hungry. It's a very powerful motor, but it draws a lot of amps, and I've seen that on other motors as well. Um, I think when they just have the bushing, and the bushing is well lubricated, like I'm going to show you, I think they're actually quieter and smoother in operation. Once you go up in size to 1102 or 1103 or anything, Thing bigger than that, you're going to start seeing full ball bearings on the top and bottom on any of those kind of motors. And usually they don't need additional lubrication. On a few occasions with the smaller ones like 1103, I have seen cases where that can help. It depends on the condition and the quality of the ball bearings to begin with. Now I want to show you how to apply the oil. It's actually really easy. This is definitely something that anybody can do. And I'm going to demonstrate it on this Shutterbug 85 because it's pretty easy to see on these motors. All you're going to need is an oil bottle with a needle nose like this. I'll go over types of oil in a second. Um, but that needle is going to be able to point all the way into the shaft of the motor. When I do this for myself, I don't even take the props off, but I'll take them off this time so that you can see what I'm doing. You'll want to be careful because you really only need a tiny bit of this oil. Um, it's better to apply a tiny bit and then apply a tiny bit again. Uh, if you apply too much, it's just going to make a mess. It's not going to hurt the motors, but it'll make a mess, and that is the one drawback of using the oil. You can see on some of my Whoop Racing frames, some of this black gunk that's in here, that's from me being sloppy and the oil kind of sprays on the inside and then dust can stick to that. Uh, it doesn't harm anything, but it doesn't look as clean. So if you want to avoid that, then use just a tiny bit of oil and keep a paper towel handy too so that you can clean up any messes. Another tip is that you really don't have to squeeze the bottle. If you just kind of tip it down, it'll often come out on its own. In fact, sometimes it'll come out and form a big drop on the end, and then you try to go in your motor and you end up applying more oil than you needed. So what I'm going to do is come in from the side so that I can hold my bottle sideways instead of holding it up and down, because when I do that, you can see that it wants to form a drip. So I'm going to come in with the bottle from the side, uh, not squeezing it yet. Once it's in position along the shaft, then I'm going to tip it down or squeeze it a tiny bit. And you can usually see the oil then lick its way around the rest of the circle. You can do exactly the same thing with these smaller motors. You just need to come in through the hole to that center shaft, apply a little bit of oil in there, work it into place. And then if you want to get the clip on the back, just the tiniest drop in there is all you need. Once you've got the oil on there, you're really done. You could go fly, but I recommend uh, turning the motor several times to help work that oil down the shaft. And then when you do arm, I suggest putting a paper towel under it and just let it sit there um, for several seconds idling, because again, that low RPM uh, spinning will help to work the oil around. If you go immediately to really high RPMs, uh, it may not work around as well. It may just splatter out a little bit more than necessary. As far as the type of oil to use, there's probably several different options out there. These are the three that I've tried. Um, but no matter what oil you use, uh, there's a couple things you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a needle nose tip like this in order to apply it all the way to the inside of the motor. 
You're also going to need an oil that has a low viscosity, uh, meaning that it flows very easily. And that's because of the high RPMs of the motors. You don't want to slow the motors down. And you also want an oil that is 100% synthetic. A natural oil might break down over time and turn into grease, and that might actually make things worse. And so you don't want that. You want a synthetic oil. Now, the first one that I ever tried was this liquid bearings. Um, this is designed for high KV brushless motors, and I got this on Amazon like a year and a half ago. This definitely gets the job done, and when I started using this on my Whoop motors, that's what really convinced me uh, that it was something worth doing. Uh, sometime later, I found out that some other people use this Zoom oil, so I got some of that to try out. Zoom is actually designed for sewing machines. The nice thing is it comes in a big bottle, it's relatively cheap, and it's a clear liquid that's specifically designed not to stain clothing, so that's a nice bonus feature. Unfortunately, it comes with this applicator, which this must be useful for sewing machines. Um, it has this spout that comes out. Uh, the problem is this just isn't fine enough. Um, so this bottle is not very good for our purpose. If you buy this, then you're pretty much going to have to buy another applicator. I put some in one of these little bottles so that I could try it out. And the last one is called Black Diamond Bearing Oil. It's by Shell Racing or Shelly. I'm not sure uh, how you pronounce that. Uh, but they focus on RC racing cars and that kind of thing. And they've got a bunch of products and they do a ton of research. And so this one is specifically designed for this kind of application. And this one also works really well. In fact, if I had to recommend one of them, I would probably recommend this one as being the most premium of these oils. But the other two can get the job done. All right, now that we've talked about all of that theory, I want to show you some more of the actual testing that I did. This is definitely the most difficult part of making this video, uh, and it's the reason why it took me so long to get this project done. Um, I started collecting data for this many months ago, uh, but it's actually not very easy to capture on video, and you can't really redo a test after you've done it because unlubricating motors is not very practical. At first I started doing flight tests like the one that you're seeing here. Uh, I would hover in place, sometimes I would pump the throttle, and then I'd go oil the motors and I would try it again. Uh, the problem is it's very hard to reproduce that. Uh, the PID controller is doing its thing, uh, I'm controlling it manually, there's just a lot of variables and it wasn't very reproducible. And the other problem is that the motors are not the only thing making sound. Uh, the props also make quite a bit of sound. For example, this is my Primo 2S and you really can't hear anything except the props in this video. So this time around I thought I'd do things a little bit differently. I put a hole in this box for a USB cable so that I can plug it into the bottom of the drone and have the drone sit flat like this while it's connected to Betaflight. And using the motors tab in Betaflight, I can command the exact motor speed without any props. This Meteor 65 is the first drone that I tested with the new setup, and I was especially interested to see how this one would do because of the unique construction of these motors with bushings on top and bearings on the bottom. And I used this black diamond oil for all of the tests that you're about to see. Unfortunately, it was hard to get really reproducible results with this setup because the motors would sometimes vibrate this box, and depending on exactly how they were resting on the box, the box would sometimes make more sound than anything else, and so I had to really kind of play with how it was positioned. That's why in the later tests, I had a foam block under the drone. I also noticed something else that was really interesting. After I had first oiled these motors and started spinning them, at certain speeds, you could hear this weird squelchy sound. Listen to this. It's the only time I've heard a motor make that sound after oiling it, and I was trying to think of what it could be, and I really don't know unless it's the sound of the oil squelching its way in and out of the bearing canister. If that's true, then I guess the good news is we're getting oil to the bearings, and the bad news is the bearings weren't very well sealed to begin with. The next drone that I tested was this Mobula 6 with 25,000 kV 0802 motors. This is the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video, but I also recorded it at multiple speeds. And this time I also did a screen recording so you could see what the gyrographs were like at the same time. It's 
it's worth pointing out that I had never lubricated these motors in the past. This is my first time with this drone, and this drone is relatively new. I've only flown it a few times uh, because of the limited range of the receiver in this one, but that means these motors are in good condition. And putting the foam underneath definitely helped give me more reproducible results, uh, but then I actually ran into a new problem. Check this out. It turns out if the motors spin at just the right frequency, you can get a resonance going through the entire frame, which just makes the whole frame buzz. I guess it's kind of like the opera glass phenomenon for whoops. Next up is this Zero Grav build, which has 0603 19,500 kV motors. I don't usually put motors this small on my builds, but this one's pretty nice for a tight track. And these 19,500 kV beta FPV motors are actually really smooth and quiet right from the factory. But let's hear what they sound like with a little bit of oil. You might recognize this next one if you've been watching my channel. This is the 15 gram whoop that I made a build about, uh, even lighter with the props off like this. And it has 0603 16,000 kV motors from Racer Star. Now, I do not recommend these Racer Star motors uh, because the production quality is really low. When I got them, it was already kind of noisy. And after flying it some more, it's just gotten worse and worse. And now they're really noisy, really rough motors, um, and I'm going to have to switch them out. But I've definitely never oiled these motors, so it'll be interesting to see if the oil can improve the performance of a motor that's not in good condition. Moving up in size, these are Beta FPV 1102 13,500 kV motors running on 1S. This is my HX100 SE. Now these motors do have bearings all the way through, and so I don't expect the oil to make a big difference, but let's see. And this is the last one I'm going to show today. This is one of my Shutterbug 85 builds with a Beta FPV 11,000 kV 1103 motor. The bearings in these motors are not really that great. Uh, they can be a little bit noisy, uh, but they fly really well. And so it'll be interesting to see if the oil helps. Um, I think it has helped in the past and I have oiled these before. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see any difference now. There are obviously lots of different kinds of motors and there's different kinds of oil. So I'm curious to know if any of you have ever tried lubricating your motors. And if so, what did you use and what was your experience like? I'd love to hear about that down in the comment section below. Uh, and if you appreciate this kind of content, then I would appreciate it if you took a second to hit those like and subscribe buttons, just because that helps more people to see this content. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for watching. Uh, stay safe out there, uh, stay flying, and I'll see you next time.